This is a presentation of the Baptist Missions Department of the Baptist Union of South Africa. Visitors to the reef never forget their first sight of the gold mines, whether seen in clear sunlight or in the stark simplicity of approaching darkness. Instinctively, one thinks of the men working thousands of meters below ground in conditions of discomfort, danger and darkness. How glad they are to be going out into the sunshine again and then joining the stream of tired men going to the showers, to the dining room, to the comfort and the washing facilities of the hostel. United by common danger, strong friendships are formed, yet soon their contracts will expire and they will probably never see each other again. Somewhere between the pit head and the hostel, they may see one of our book vans with display shelves full of Bibles, Christian books and basic educational literature. Every book contains a gospel tract. Much administration is involved in maintaining supplies, checking stock and bookkeeping. Mr. Fred Ashman takes care of this aspect as a retirement ministry. Each team member is dedicated to personal evangelism, to large and small groups where some laugh but others listen. This man is obviously excited to have a new book in his hands. How much more exciting if he also finds the saviour of which the Bible speaks. Using one of the new book vans given to us by the SABWA, Patrick Duma is always believing that this can happen as he does his daily rounds. Reverend Mishek Zimlazi also perseveres in a work full of slight contacts and changing faces. Few miners serve out their time without spending some time in hospital, some with serious injuries. This creates opportunities for them to be visited by the Reverend Osio Kamala, who always witnesses with an open Bible in his hand. He uses several of the languages spoken by the more than 180,000 men who come to the Free State Mines from all parts of Africa. After a close brush with death, and with much time to think about it, surely the Word of God falls upon some good ground. With such need and opportunity, we may carry the light. We may not keep it to ourselves. The light of Christian joy shines on this man's face. Then many miles from his home in Malawi, he has found Christ and Christian fellowship. There will be many others like him in the evangelistic meetings which are held wherever and whenever possible. Visitation is done in the hostels. Chalkboards are used as another medium for transmitting the gospel. Saved sinners sing of Jesus, whether at home or far away. And to Africans, the name of Jesus is the sweetest of all music. But more is needed than salvation and song. Now comes discipleship, and men are encouraged to sign up for our Bible Way correspondence courses. First they will learn the Bible answers to the question, Who is Jesus? And then study Mark's simple story of the words and works of Jesus himself. Hopefully, they will also work through all nine books of the two courses of Bible Way. Some will ask to be baptized before they return to the countries from which they came. The transitory nature of their mining employment ensures a large turnover of men being exposed to the gospel. But it complicates the task of following up converts so widely scattered and so difficult to trace. We need your prayers that we may develop effective strategies for ensuring that converts become church members. Sadly, for many, the man church will be the only one they will ever know.
The Reverend and Mrs. Noel Russell head up this work. Remember them also in your prayers. Mrs. Jean Russell is a warm, caring person who fulfills the role of mother and encourager to the team. She also does much of the office work. The evangelistic contact is stronger with married men who can serve longer contracts and stay for some time in the mine's married quarters. Our missionaries organize Sunday schools and in this way reach the whole family. What of the future? Despite the rise or the decline of the gold price, at least 13 new mines are now being developed and the policy is to provide more and better accommodation for married people and their families. This policy will result in mine villages or incorporation into local townships where pastors can live and plant churches. Hostels will be built for the large number of single men still to be recruited or married men who for whatever reason must leave their families behind them. As the new headgear structures grow, we too are expecting growth. Many old minds still do not have a regular gospel witness or pastoral care. Now many thousands more will be within reach, but without missionaries, unless we can increase support. When all the new recruits arrive from the dark parts of Africa, what will happen to them? Some will descend into the blacker darkness of shebeens and prostitutes, returning home destitute or diseased, perhaps both. Some will be refined by the grace of God, rather like the gold they mine, but so much more precious to their Saviour. The mines do have a beauty of their own, but nothing can compare with the flowering of Christian character. One of our most popular hymns says it well, His kingdom knows no end, and round his pierced feet fair flowers of paradise extend their fragrance ever sweet. Are you helping us to grow these beautiful flowers for our Lord and Saviour?